Hi fellow artists, my name is Lauren, I am the artist behind Potato Art Studios and in today's video I'll be demonstrating how I drew and colored this penguin. So if you're interested in seeing how I created this piece, just keep on watching. So if you're already familiar with how my time-lapse drawings typically go and you want to just go ahead straight to the stage where I start coloring, I'll have a timestamp down below and you can click on that and fast forward a few minutes. Um, but if you're new here or you'd like to see me sketch out this penguin first, um, I'll get into it right now. So on my piece of paper, I have a one inch grid already drawn out and I also have the same number of squares on my photo that's in my computer and what I'm doing is just looking at my photo and transferring that information square by square onto my piece of paper. So in this first stage, I am just roughly sketching out some of the major features. So I'm looking at the outline of my subject and also the main features which would be the border between the white and the black of the penguin. I'm not getting into drawing individual tiny feathers on the penguin. Um, that would be a little bit too much information to include in this drawing. And after I have that first sketch laid out, I'm going to refine it further by making half inch grid marks on both my photo and my paper. So what I'm effectively doing is multiplying the number of squares by four. So I have even more points of reference when I'm refining my sketch again. So when I'm going over the sketch the second time, I'm actually making small adjustments as I'm going along. So my sketch, I would say, would probably be maybe 30% accurate to the photo. And when I'm refining the details, I'm trying to make adjustments where I need to to get it within, I would say, at least a sixteenth of an inch accuracy of the photo. So I'm going around and basically making these small micro adjustments. So we're, I'm going over the exact same sketch and just adjusting each line left or right by a little bit and trying to get my drawing to be accurate within reason. So it's not going to be perfect, but it will be more accurate than it was at the beginning. So whatever method that you choose to do, um, it can be tracing, it can be using a projector or using the grid method like I'm doing here or just freehanding. The important takeaway is the more time you spend on your sketch in the beginning phase, the easier it will be for you later on. Um, when you get into details like eyes, noses, mouths, it doesn't seem like a lot, but a eighth of an inch or sixteenth of an inch can make a really big difference when everything's off by just a little bit. So for this case, um, my penguin doesn't have a lot of facial features, it just has an eye and a beak, but if you're drawing people, um, you definitely want to spend that extra time, maybe an extra 30 minutes or an hour on your initial sketch to try and get your features as accurate as possible so that when you're coloring, you're not going to end up redoing a lot of your hard work that you did in the beginning because something is just a little bit off. So after we have that plotted in, I'm going to just try and block in some of the darker values on the penguin. And I'm just using an eyeshadow applicator that I rubbed in my dark pastel color. So I'm just trying to get a feel for the darkest areas. And after that's done, I'm going to... I forgot about the background because I was so excited about the penguin. So I'm going to roughly sketch in some of the details in the stone background behind the penguin. 
and start blocking in some color. So if you're not familiar with color theory, um, basically when you have two things, two colors next to each other, one color definitely can affect the other. So I like to have at least an idea of the background color first before I really start getting into the main subject, which is usually an animal. Because my paper color is quite dark, I really want to make sure I have some of that covered so I can get a better idea of my, my color palette that I'm working with. And you see my background's still pretty messy, but at least I have about 80% of the surface area covered, and then I can get into putting the colors into the penguin. When you think of a penguin, I think most people just think of something that's black and white. And that is true, I am using a lot of black and white in this penguin. But I'm actually using a lot more of other colors than white for the penguin's stomach and neck. And that's because white tends to display the colors of objects reflected around it. So if you... If you look carefully at my reference picture in the corner, um, the penguin only has white in a few areas on the very high points of its forehead, right below its chin, and at the upper part of its chest. Everything else is sort of a muted color. So if you look at the rock background, um, the rocks are kind of like a tan, beige, green color, and those colors are actually reflected in the penguin's body. And that's because light shines on the rocks, light bounces off the rocks, carrying some of that color information with it, and it actually gets reflected off of the penguin's body. So the color you see from the penguin is actually influenced by the color of things around it. So that's why my penguin, when you look at his stomach, he has a lot of colors going on. He basically has the rainbow in his stomach right now. And with pastels, I found that it may be because my colors are pretty limited, but I usually have to work from saturated to desaturated colors. So my penguin will look like I turned the saturation and contrast levels up a lot at first, but then as we're working on the penguin some more, I'm going to overlap some neutral colors like a gray or a brown over on top to lighten that or to reduce that saturation. So one of the goals I had with this project was to work on a more detailed background. And so if you've seen any of my projects in the past, I'll show them on the screen here. They usually involve just a simple gradient. So I wasn't ready to do a full background at that point, um, just because I was still trying to figure out how I'm using pastels. But in this project, I decided I, I was going to try and level up my skills and try and approach doing a full background. And so here you'll see that I'm trying to darken up those black areas and also begin to lighten the areas on the penguin's body. And when you're drawing feathers or hair, I think it's important to get the base color first. So if you squint at your subject, those colors that you see, I try to block in first. Um, I try not to get too caught up in the individual highlights or hairs or feathers first. I think having the color down is more important. So once I have the color blocked in, then I can go and try and give the illusion of feathers. And I think at this point I was really unhappy with the background. So what I did was I pulled another photo from my computer that had a different picture of the scene of the penguin enclosure. 
and I use that water as the reference for the background. When we're working on textures like rocks, um, I think the it's kind of hard to approach something that's very textured like a rock because there are a lot of different colors in it. So I try to um, simplify it by making the background less in focus and the foreground objects more in focus. So that kind of reduces the amount of work I need to do. So I'm not spending the same amount of time on my subject as the background. And now we're closing it up on the penguin's face. And so you can see I had the black, black, pink, and white values blocked in, and now we're just going in and applying some of that detail. So the most important part is typically the eye of the animal that you're drawing. So I really want to make sure that I have that highlight on the penguin's upper lid and lower lid defined. And also make sure that I get those bright highlights in. Because as you're working, the white can sometimes get a little dull depending on how much dust from other colors around it um, get on that surface. And for the penguin's right flipper, um, I'm simplifying the values by just having the shadows and the midtones blocked in and just simply making small dots where the black feathers are. And when we get to working on the background some more, um, you'll notice that I flipped my paper upside down and that's so that I can really easily access that rock on the paper's left side, which is now on the right side, and kind of approach it from a different angle. And so, and the same thing applies for the feet. So a good tip is that if you're having a trouble figuring out shapes of what you're drawing, sometimes it's easier for you to flip it upside, see it by flipping your paper upside down. And so at this stage, where I had, was having a really difficult time figuring out the shadows and the rocks and the textures, um, mainly because my I'm, I don't draw rocks very often. And also, if you look at my reference picture, there's actually a penguin blocking part of that rock, uh, which was kind of unfortunate. So I was actually using several other pictures in combination with this main picture to fill in some of that information. And so as we're finding the last bit of details on the penguin's body, um, you'll notice that I'm working on giving the illusion of the individual black and white feathers where the black and the white areas meet. And I'm Doing it in a very simplified approach, I basically have the white move in on the black area and the black move in on the white area. So I alternate between using the black and the white to make it look like the feathers are actually overlapped. Not sure if I'm really happy with how the background turned out um, there might be I might make adjustments in the future I think this is a good exercise in kind of pushing myself to do something beyond what I typically do there's a lot more information in the background than I typically use and for the very final step I'm making sure I have that eye defined as much as possible so you'll see that I'm making just small marks over the face and just tightening those details up. And 
and this is the final drawing. So if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and that will tell YouTube to recommend this video to other artists. If you're not following me on Instagram, I'll have my Instagram handle on the screen and also linked down below. But I have a poll on my Instagram stories every Monday that runs for 24 hours and you can vote on what subject you'd like to see me draw next. So I think for next week, it looks like the winner is going to be a red panda. So if you'd like to see a drawing tutorial of a red panda, make sure you subscribe and turn on your notifications so you'll be notified the next time I post a video. I'll have a link to my time-lapse playlist in the description box and up in the corner. So if you'd like to see my previous time-lapse tutorials, you can check them out. I have about a dozen tutorials right now for you to view. If you have any questions or comments or there's something I didn't explain well, um, please ask down below in the comments and I will try my best to get back to you. Again, all of the materials I used will also be linked down below. And thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in my next one.